Predictive processing theory says that the brain is not primarily a passive receiver of data. Instead, it's a prediction machine. It builds an internal generative model, a best guess of what the world will present next. And it constantly checks incoming sensations against those predictions. And when reality does not match the guess, a prediction error happens. And then the brain has two options. Either it can change the world so that it matches the prediction, which is also called a assimilation or it can change the prediction so that it matches the world which is also known as accommodation and that ongoing process of anticipating acting and adjusting is what allows us to stay alive and make sense of our surroundings in a way every moment of our lives is our brain trying to stay one step ahead of surprise imagine your brain as a scientist it is always forming hypotheses making predictions and checking how well those predictions match reality and when the results don't fit it learns from the failures or errors that occurred and most of these predictions are small and harmless expecting our coffee to taste sweet or our phone to unlock or expecting a reply from a friend but some predictions are about things that matter deeply to us who we are whether we are loved or whether our efforts will ever be enough and when those deeper expectations repeatedly fail the brain's model of world begins to tremble and that trembling is what we experience as suffering in predictive processing theory emotions are not some random bursts of feeling they are the brain's way of monitoring how well its predictions are doing over time and when the brain's prediction succeed and uncertainty decreases we feel calm joy and relief and when uncertainty grows and predictions keep failing we feel anxiety frustration or despair emotion is brain's performance feedback and when we experience pleasure it tells us that the model is working and when we feel emotions such as distress or anger it tells us that something is not working now imagine facing a world that keeps defying your expectations you try again and again to make sense of it but nothing actually fits you prepare so hard to crack an exam but you fail miserably you have been working so hard to land a job but it's just not happening you want to settle down in life but you're just unable to find someone that aligns with your values and at some point your brain starts drawing a painful conclusion that maybe nothing i do will ever work and this is what happens in depression the brain loses confidence and that is actions can change the environment it lives in it stops trying to adjust the world and begins adjusting itself instead by lowering its expectations trying to protect itself from disappointment but in doing so it creates smaller darker reality anxiety on the other hand tells a different story but it follows the same logic the brain learns that certain situations are dangerous and it starts predicting threat everywhere it becomes too confident in its fear and so it avoids retreat eats and narrows its world to stay safe addiction is also brain's way of minimizing prediction error and when a particular behavior like drinking or scrolling or eating reliably changes internal states and sensations the brain learns that it works and over time that belief becomes so strong that it cuts out everything else even when a person consciously wants to stop predictive brain insists that this is what keeps me stable so keep going and in both anxiety and addiction the brain is overreacting it is trying too hard to avoid any surprise and in doing so it stops learning new things and experiences and starts to narrow down this concept is also known as reciprocal narrowing as your predictions narrow your environment also follows you stop exploring new situations because they create uncertainty and the less new evidence you gather the stronger your old beliefs appear to be and the stronger those beliefs become the less willing you are to test them and this self reinforcing cycle is how suffering deepens the brain's model becomes smaller simpler and more certain but at the cost of vitality and suffering is not chaos it is your brain's clinging too tightly to its old map of the world if distress comes from a rigid model then healing means helping the brain to learn again therapies from cognitive behavioral therapy to acceptance therapy to commitment therapy work by reintroducing flexibility into our system they don't only challenge negative thoughts they create safe experiences where new predictions can be tested and new evidence can gently reshape our beliefs but 
even outside therapy, we ourselves can begin to help our models update. Every time we approach something unfamiliar, instead of avoiding it, we give the brain new data. Writing down your expectations before an event and then comparing them with what actually happened can also help you see how often reality surprises you and how many surprises turn out to be harmless, even exciting. Small, consistent actions like these help the brain that the world is still learnable and safe. And that message alone begins to reopen its map. Still, sometimes the prediction errors feel too big to manage alone. And during that time, if your world feels overwhelmingly confusing or painful, then it's not failure. It simply means that your brain needs another mind to help it test new models safely. And that's when therapy can make all the difference. We can also try to adapt to a different lens. What if suffering is not a malfunction, but a message? Maybe it's a message about your growth, a sign that the world you have been predicting no longer fits the one you live in. Pain in this view is not some punishment, but an invitation to learn. And when the brain says something doesn't match, it is not betraying you. It is asking for your help to gather new evidence, to test new actions, to build a more flexible model, a process of regaining confidence in your own ability to generate change. And that confidence is what healing feels like. So when life feels unbearable, remember your brain is not failing you. It's simply trying to update its old map of the world. Pain might be a sign that you are standing at the edge of a new understanding, a new beginning. And healing might begin the moment you stop fighting that sign and start listening to what it is trying to teach. Because suffering at its deepest level is not the end of meaning. Rather, it's the mind's way of asking to make meaning again. If you've continued watching this video till now, please let me know what you liked about this video and I'll see you in my next one.